Good morning, everybody. It is my privilege to be here today. And we'll start opening the session by introducing Dr. Augusto Bal, medical doctor from the Universidad Autónoma de Centro América, San Jose, Costa Rica. He's an attending physician uh, of the Center of Reproduction and the Center of Gynecology and Obstetrics, Punta Pacifica, and at the hospital Punta Pacifica, which is affiliated with the Johns Hopkins Medicine International. He's a master in human reproduction at the Clinic Hospital of Valencia, trained in ultrasound gynecology, endoscopy, urogynecology, and cosmetic gynecology. And he's trained by Professor Bonilla Musoles in Valencia and by Dr. Mario Vega, Director of the Center of Gynecology and Obstetrics at Punta Pacifica. Dr. Augusto, the floor is yours. Good morning, everybody. It's an honor for me to be here. I thank uh, the organization for inviting me. And this morning, I'm going to uh, talk about the, those, the high serum progesterone levels of the day of the ACH administration after a, affect a pregnancy rate after ERT. First of all, to have a background, high serum progesterone level on the day of human coron coronic gonadotropy administration is a matter of continued debate. First, first time was described in 1990 with Elderstein um, when he found no predictive uh, association of pregnancy outcome. In, um, in 1992, 91, a school graph, he described that he, um, he, the, the high levels, uh, is, it was related with a bad um, pre prognosis of pregnancies. So since the beginning, there, there always been a different uh, information about this, and I try to explain to you what, what is, um, is been happening from from the beginning of this description in 1990. They always talk about PLA, uh, progesterone elevation and uh, with no LS surge. So in, in the beginning, it was called uh, premature luteinization. So it is now not called it that way. It's only a premature surge of the progesterone. OK. What happened with the LS surge suppression? Well, as we all know, uh, with the use of high doses of hormones in control of viral stimulation, there's a risk of a premature surge of the LH hormone, which uh, could disrupt normal follicular and oocyte development, making treatment less successful. The administration of GNRI agonists in combination with HMA reduces the risk of cycle cancellation. This is what first described by Jen in 1983 in clinical application of gonadotropin-releasing hormone in gonadotropin-releasing hormones analogous, fertility sterility. <clears throat> As all we know, we use uh, the, uh, different uh, protocols using antagonists and uh, agonists. Both of them have a review from the Cochrane that it is, um, they produce a suppression of leather surge uh, with good outcomes in the pregnancy uh, rates, okay? Um, some of uh, the agonists, as we all know, have some disadvantage, uh, and uh, the antagonists have some advantage against agonists. So, uh, but they are use it, and then they have a lot of evidence that they, they can suppress the yellow source in the pr uh, protocols. What is happening in, um, in the luteal phase, uh, the follicle, it is induced by the LH as, as, as the protein kinase, uh, the serum growth factors, addition proteins, and other inducers. They, they can stimulate the granulosa cells and the theca cells. So they convert this follicle uh, to the corpus luteum and produce the progesterone that we, we all know that produce the, the luteal phase. And it is uh, important for the pregnancy to keep going. It is first described by Murphy in, in year 2000, and, and now is, I, I put it here because I want to, to explain what is uh, the people are uh, this, the, the study are uh, showing about this. Um, there's a lot of um, uh, story about the LH activity. Uh, yesterday I was here hearing about the LH activity, if it's necessary or not, supplementation. 
And uh, Hughes, uh, he studied uh, if we add uh, LH supplementation, does it affect the, the progesterone levels uh, during the protocols? And he, he found that this systemic review shows that this prodiating LH activity supplementation in combination with FSH during ovarian spirit, uh, stimulation does not have a consistent effect on serum progesterone concentration at the same time at the SH administration. So what is happening if it's, we are giving, we are giving the DLH and if the DLH is the responsible for, for producing the luteinization, why if we supplemented the, the uh, LH during the cycle, why is not showing high levels of progesterone? So they, they try to explain it. Uh, their analysis shows that the, that, that the decrease in serum progesterone, but mainly of serum when LH activity supplies, was administered from the beginning of the control of various stimulation. In contrast, patients who displayed an increase in serum progesterone received LH activity supplementation only during the late phase of the, uh, late phase of the control of various stimulation. So, if you if you give it as in the beginning, there's no a high level of serum progesterone at the time of the SH administration. And they try to explain because there are two ways that the, the dual effect of LH uh, acting in the TECA cells. Uh, uh, first of all, you observe in the early follicle phase, while the LH has a strong positive effect in the granulosa cells uh, it, during the last phase of the follicular, uh, or the follicular phase. So if we apply, we give the um, uh, LH in the late, late, late phase, so we're gonna stimulate more the granulosa and the production of progesterone will elevate. If we, if we give it since the beginning, so it won't be any, any change in the progesterone levels at all. <clears throat> Therefore, it might be assumed that adding LH activity products from the beginning of the LH ovarian stimulation can result in a decreased progesterone production while a stimulatory effect is primarily observed when LH supplementation is provided during the late stage of the control of ovarian stimulation. This was a proposed for Hughes, and also Bosch is, 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 is sustaining this in a, in a later study in 2011. Progesterone surge. What is happening in the progesterone zone? Data suggests that no, no relationship exists between LH and progesterone levels at the end of the follicular phase, since the observed increase in progesterone were not accompanied by increases in LH. So there's, there's a uh, miscalling the, the premature luteinization, so now we only call it the high level of progesterone. This is what described in, 2000, in 2003, so until 2003, they're still uh, calling the premature luteinization. Then they, 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 they mean the, uh, they, they change the terminology. In, in, in 1990, uh, Dr. Pelliser uh, demonstrated that granulosa cells from women treated with general age produced less progesterone in vitro than when their general antagonist was not used. So, why are we going to have a LH surge if you are treating the patient with GnRH? Okay, that, that's it is demonstrated in 1990 that there was no LH, LH surge, so um, the progesterone might be a, a occurring from another way, not not because of the LH stimulation. In 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 2007, Venetis, Dr. Venetis. Um, he did a, a meta-analysis, very good a meta-analysis. He studied more than 1,000 studies, and then he recruited a, a 38 a studies, and they concluded that no statistical significant association between progesterone elevation and the probability of clinical pregnancy was detected. Uh, this is a very important study because this is a meta-analysis, a huge meta-analysis study, and the, the, it changed a little bit the information that we have in that moment from the uh, uh, progesterone surge. However, it, however, it was uh, uh, debated uh, that uh, data obtained from the five selected studies from the beta analysis, which included a total of 700 cycles, show an 
uh, old trade of 0 0.75 with a percentile 95%. Uh, and a mean a difference of uh, uh, um, 20.1 with a 95% uh, interval of uh, difference uh, between patients with P elevation versus without it. So uh, Dr. Bosch, le letters to the, uh, uh, Dr. Venet is that he uh, disagreed about the, um, the, the result of this meta-analysis, how it was interpreted. And uh, he, there, there begins to study a lot of other studies that I will show you later. Uh, the, uh, the value of this meta analysis was thought to be limited because it defined a precise threshold for a detrimental serum P level, with most of the study filing to demonstrate an association arbitrarily using a low threshold level of 0 0.9 nanogram of milliliters. So that, that was co they were questioning the level that we use to use to 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 describe the this, uh, high serum progesterone levels, in in order to determine if it is or not a, um, a established that affect the protocols. Rather than excessive amounts of progesterone being produced by granulosa cell as part of the early luteinization, it's more likely that the elevated progesterone levels might be attributed to excess number of follicles, which is with one producing a normal amount of progesterone consistent with the late follicular phase. That's our conclusion with when Dr. Benet is trying to explain why if, the, if there was no LS surge, there still was a, a lot of uh, progesterone levels. Why still a debate? Uh, some some uh, uh, authors uh, criticize that there's had so many uh, there was had so many measures of the progesterone serum, so we don't have any consensus about it. So we can uh, have a, a lot of information from it. So, um, despite of uh, general uh, analogous, assuming the preovulatory rise in serum progesterone concentration bef before the administration. Or the SCA and, final, or, and the final overseas maturation, it still occurred in 5 to 30 percent of, of the cycles. It was described for very out, a lot of authors. And also, we antagonists, we still have a progesterone surge in 38 percent of the general antagonists. Um, later in, in 2000, uh, last year, 2011, progesterone level and the Dr. Eglinley try to describe if there was a relation between the progesterone estradiol ratio with the SH administration in the detrimental call of level and the treatment strategy. Uh, they, 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 uh, he, he begins to, to demonstrate that if a progesterone it was a, a, a level beyond the 1.5 nanograms for milliliter and a ratio for more than 0.55, it can affect the, the prognosis of women undergoing clivella stage, but not the blastocyte. So they were studying about, and that is where we're going now, that they're affecting the, the, the clivella stage, but not the blastocyte of the endotransfer. In, um, in, in 2010, uh, Dr. Bosch uh, described that there was a circulation uh, progesterone levels and the ongoing pregnancy rates in controlled ovarian cirrhosis cycles he concluded that patients with serum progesterone levels above, uh, below 1.5 has significantly higher ongoing pregnancy rates than those with higher than 1.5. He did a multivariate regression analysis, uh, uh, stimulated those or no, uh, that daily follicular stimulation, those normal oocytes and stradiol values in the day of ACH were possibly associated with progesterone levels. Seron progesterone levels um, were significantly greater than women treated with a general RK. And this is how I wanted to show you how the progesterone uh, uh, levels be, uh, above 1.5 affect, really, really affect here, you see the, the slope here, the, the pregnancy rates. Okay. And what is happening in the metro? The endometrial receptivity is affected with women with high circulation progesterone level at the end of the follicular phase. It was a study uh, with Dr. Labarta and Dr. Uh, Bosch in uh, that 
the study of follicular genomic analysis. Then they, they concluded that endometrial receptivity is only temporarily defective because blastocyst transfer on day five will have ex excellent potential for implantation, even in the presence of high progesterone levels at the time of ACH. Whether endometrial receptivity is able to recover from a detrimental impact observed when new when embryos were replaced on D3 is remains to be elucidated. So where are we now? Recent studies, uh, this is from uh, 2012, uh, show that cell progesterone levels effects on the outcome in vitro fertilization patients with different ovarian response analysis of more than 10,000 cycles. There was a detrimental effect of P elevations in uh, progesterone seems to be unrelated to all set uh, quality in the old respondent. There was a, a, a low pregnancy rate, but was not related to opposite quality in the oldest responders. Premature progesterone rise negatively affected, correct, uh, correlated with live birth rate in IVA cycle with general agonist analysis of uh, 2,500 cycles. Also, they, they say that no, was, no adverse effects in frozen embryo when it was uh, transferred. So we, where were we going is um, that the levels that we're using right now is 1.5 nanogramol for, for milliliter is associated with lower pregnancy rate. Uh, the, the LA supplementation since the beginning is, is not associated with progesterone source, and the endometrium might be in accordance with the implantation process, suggesting the need for cryopreservation. Thank you very much.